This video is a case study and in-depth analysis about Mr. Beast's Willy Wonka factory video. This video has already gone insanely viral. It's had 11 million views in six hours, and we're gonna break down all the elements that contribute to its success. Before we get into the storytelling analysis and the thumbnail analysis, I wanna show you something that people probably wouldn't have noticed unless you're a YouTuber specifically looking at this stuff. Mr. Beast uses a cross-platform strategy, which means that he will often tease his videos before the video is released. And he's done this with Squid Game, he does this with his really, really big videos, where it inherently goes viral. So, on, on his shorts channel, you can see that 12 days ago, he actually posted this video, a sneak peek of my chocolate factory. Welcome to my recreation of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Follow me, come down the road. What's up boys? How's the candy doing today? Probably can't hear him, the river's loud. This is just a small part of the factory. I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. My video in a couple weeks is gonna be insane. And even this has some storytelling elements which make it a good video. So for example, it has that immediate humour with Chris licking the lollipop. It's really this novel like cut, 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 cut to demonstrate the different pieces of it. And that would get you very excited for the video. This video had 7.7 .7 million views. But Mr. Beast does more promotion across more channels. It's not just YouTube shorts. For example, on his Twitter, he posted six hours ago saying, we recreated Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and flew down 10 people to go compete for it, go watch. And that has already got 57,000. Even on May 30, he actually posted a teaser with Gordon Ramsay to get more views there. On May 8th, he posted this particular post about the actual factory being built and how big, <laughs> how big this project is. This video about his chocolate factory went viral as well, having 128,000 likes with uh, 3.4 million views. And this strategy has been ported over to TikTok as well. So his same YouTube short as before actually has 17.7 .7 million views on TikTok. And then he's got another one on TikTok with uh, Chandler doing You're something. You're assigned to take panoramics of your bus. On Instagram, he's posted the Willy Wonka thing again, but this time what he's actually done is he's posted that live. So six hours ago when the video was posted, he cross-posted the Instagram at the same time simultaneously. So having these audiences across different platforms is something that you need to think about. It's not something that you can achieve overnight. That's actually something that you build in the long term with your YouTube channel. So let's move on to the title and thumbnail. And for YouTubers, it's really important to get your title and thumbnail right because that's going to increase your click-through rate. It's going to increase your CTR to the point where people see your video and instantly click on it. But the thing is, even if you tease the video enough, if you don't have a killer title and thumbnail, then when people actually find it on their YouTube feeds because it goes viral later, they may not actually click on it. And so what is it that makes Mr. Beast's thumbnails and titles so successful? Let's start off with the title, I Built Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. The title is so short and to the point. It passes this water cooler test of, you know, if I wanted to tell someone else about this video, I know exactly what words to tell them with, you know. I watched a video by Mr. Beast, uh, he made a chocolate factory. I watched a video by Mr. Beast, he became Willy Wonka. And by keeping it shorter and more concise like this, you know exactly what you're getting into when you're watching it. Let's talk about the thumbnail. The thumbnail follows these really good principles which really grab the viewer's attention and also make them realize immediately what the video is about. Mr. Beast uses this style of thumbnail quite a lot. So the idea where you've got him on the left-hand side and then some grand thing on the right-hand side which you're interested to click on. So here, it's obviously him with the Willy Wonka uh, factory. You can see in other videos he's had, for example, the Squid Game one is him plus the Squid Game participants, him here plus the Lamborghini. He often uses this thumbnail style to be like, hey, like, you know, I've got this thing I want to show you and this is the cool thing, you got to click on the video to watch it. He's only used two elements in the thumbnail and so something that's really important is not to try to use too many elements to get viewers confused. You have to understand that when people are looking at thumbnails, they're really just going to be looking at it for, you know, less than a second, maybe only a few milliseconds. But not only that, you have to understand that your thumbnail is going to be contrasting against all these other thumbnails that are also on the home page or also in the suggested box. The color schemes here, like obviously it's the Willy Wonka theme being purple and yellow, but but this high contrast type of thumbnail really appeals visually. Like you can tell immediately that you want to click on this video. Having this bright, saturated, colorful thumbnail is especially true in terms of how it appeals to younger audiences. But of course, anyone can look at this thumbnail and be like, I think that this video is quite interesting. 
Here, his eyes are whiter than you would expect. Here, his teeth are whiter. His face pops out more, and that's all sort of Photoshop related. Similarly, the Wonka part of things it looks like it's a semi-realistic thing. You can't have it look completely like a cartoon because then it would be like, oh, like this video is just a cartoon, which is not. It's like he actually made this chocolate factory. Having this emotion of wow is like this emotional valence that makes you excited to click on the video. And all of this, by the way, is just happening within a second. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into the storytelling of the video itself. I recreated Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in real life. And one of these 10 people is going to walk away with this chocolate factory. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Yo. Welcome to my wonderful creation. Oh my gosh. It is candy land here. Look at the river. It's a chocolate door. Oh, he's taking a bite out of our door. That's oh good. God. These 10 contestants are all here because they found a golden ticket when they bought one of our Peace Bowl bars. For our first challenge, we're going to play hide and seek. The first part of any good YouTube video is the hook. The hook has to reaffirm the click. So when people have just clicked on I built with the Wonka's Chocolate Factory, they need to see almost immediately Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory being built by Mr. Beast. It's a mistake to try to tease that out through the end and leave it to halfway for the video for the big reveal because the thing is that your viewers aren't even going to get there. So you actually need to give people what they came for and Mr. Beast does that extremely well. There's a subtle zoom effect here that always happens and Mr. Beast uses that because you know someone might have just been watching an ad for five seconds. They almost need to be re-engaged immediately. We've always got these subtitles down the bottom here to add a bit more visual dynamics but Obviously, the real shot is him panning out to, to reveal the grandness, the actual context of how big this thing is. And the thing is, this video is a Mr. Beast video, so it's not about him building the actual factory itself, but rather about the competition that's about to result. Yeah, we've got multiple different cuts really, really quickly, and that's just the fast-paced storytelling that Mr. Beast uses. So, for example, with them. In real life. And one of these 10 people Two. is going to walk away with this chocolate factory. Yeah. Yeah. We go. Three, ah. four, five. Wow. And yeah. that's within 12 seconds. <laughs> Maybe six by 12 seconds, basically. Here's a subtle effect when you zoom out and then you change the zoom timing. That's what's called a speed ramp. So from here, it's like slowly zooming out. You're sort of teased. You're wondering what's going to come next. And then it zooms out completely because you just want to find out. <laughs> In real life. And, and so that's a speed ramp. These 10 people is going to walk away with this chocolate factory. Yeah. Wow. Yo. Welcome to my one. That is a big reveal. That is a big payoff already within 13 seconds. For the person who clicks on that and sees that part of the video, immediately the reaction is going to be like, wow. And that's really one you want to get as soon as possible within a video. This video is 17 minutes long. But if you lose your viewer within the first 30 seconds, then you're done for. <laughs> These 10 contestants are all here because they found a golden ticket when they bought one of our Peace Bowl bars. For our first challenge, we're gonna play hide and seek. You have a thousand seconds, go hide. Oh. <laughs> Classic Mr. B style, get into the challenge right away. Don't hold back now that you've done this reveal because people want to see the next thing. Oh, okay, we gotta go hide. Let's go, let's go. Oh, look at this Coca Cola. Actually, something interesting here is that, like, he could have spent time explaining the rules. The thing is, at this point in time, it's hide and seek. It's a pretty easy game, but even then, he's taking the time not to over explain things. So you can see here, see, he's actually put in as a subtitle, the first person found is eliminated, as opposed to speaking that out loud. I'm not sure if it's because, you know, they forgot to say it, which I think is unlikely. I think it's more so that you just don't want to waste too much time explaining the concept of the game, explaining the, the thing that's happening. Because if you do that, like people, sure, they'll understand what's going on, but you might lose the person's interest. And that's the thing that you want to keep more so, even than perhaps the understanding of what's going on. Does it really matter that the first person found is eliminated? Like, and does that need to be explained verbally? Not really, you're gonna see it in a second. So that's why you can just, you know, put it as a subtitle, skip ahead, and just try to keep the pace up, keep that really good momentum that you've got up for the video so far. Oh, okay, we gotta go hide. Let's go, let's go. Oh, look at this Coca-Cola. Oh my gosh. It's a marshmallow area. What about these? A bit of humor there. I don't know if I can fit in here. See you. Awesome. Yo, what in the... What even is this area? Let's go. If I were to hide... One of the reasons that this video is so appealing is because you've actually got so many different scene changes, but you still understand exactly what's going on. You understand that everyone's in the factory, so you don't really need to understand physically where each location is. But being able to create so many visually interesting scenes and being able to introduce them one after another is a really powerful way to keep people's attention. 
And you also have to understand that these scenes are very, very visually different. Like the colors are completely different. The actual composition of the scene is very different. Something that people can unfortunately fall prey to when they're recording video is that they just sort of have very similar looking scenes, even if those scenes are actually in physically different locations. But if they just look the same, then it's, it tends to lose people's attention. So sorry that I'm not changing the scene for this analysis video. Let's keep going. I'd probably hide in the chocolate river. I don't feel like checking it. So if they did, they win. One of our side rooms in the chocolate factory. Cake. No, no. I can't have any. Obviously, you can't have a chocolate factory without offices to manage it. No one in here. Let's go this way. Mmm. Surely nobody's hiding in here. I don't see anybody. Nobody's in here either. And this is the wall of trim. This and Nolan will be very smart at this content creation thing, right? They know that guy is gonna be in the box. <laughs> or they, they obviously have a strong feeling that the guy is gonna be in the box. But by doing that, they're creating this anticipation, you know, it's the tease rather than just the end answer. Because now you've got this setup, you've got this new narrative setup of just like, you know, what's gonna to happen to the guy in the box? That's a mini narrative that's been set up here. And so you're gonna to want to watch until at least the end of that narrative. This is the Wallum Shrams room. What are you saying right now? That's marshmallow backwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jimmy, oh, we were just calling <laughs> so you, Jimmy. We found this really awesome hiding spot. Oh, the guy dressed up cool. It's this way, watch out for the giant candy cane. You've seen the movie before, right? I have. All right, then you know you must get in the boat. In the boat. Don't ask me how, but we put a chocolate river with a chocolate waterfall in the middle of this warehouse. Hi, Jimmy! Part the go. waterfall! I thought this was gonna stop. The waterfall was supposed to part, but I guess that messed up. Our next <laughs> <laughs> the waterfall is obviously a big, cool part of the chocolate factory, but there's something interesting about Mr. Beast thing. Even though he's got these grand things uh, and these grand videos, but there's this fine line between being overproduced and being underproduced that Mr. Beast hits really well. If you're overproduced, that's kind of like a reality TV show or something like that. But people on YouTube, they're not looking for overproduced content. People on YouTube are looking for relatable content. Despite the fact that this is a huge, multi-million dollar project, there's still this kind of casual feel to it. And that's something that's different from YouTube as a medium platform compared to other platforms. I call it the candy wall of death. Sounds a lot scarier than it is. So the important thing to understand about Mr. Beast's scenes is that every single scene has a purpose, whether that purpose is to highlight more context or to inject some humor into the scene. The scene's purpose might be to make people go, wow, but you have to space out different elements of those between parts of the video. There's probably, there's hours and hours of footage that's going to be here, that's going to be cut, put into this story. So being very purposeful, that is very important. Welcome to the rock wall. I gave Chris a gong. The last person up the candy wall is eliminated. Contestants, are you ready? Yeah! Okay. Here's another mini hook event payoff structure. You've got this hook, which is you've got a candy wall, you've got to see the event, and you're curious to see what happens at the end of it. Go, 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 go! Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Already has someone oh, bro, that guy is getting up there quick. Are you all right, sir? Appreciate it. Let's go, get up there! Remember, our chocolate factory is on the line! Actually, the chocolate factory you're climbing. You gotta press the red oh button! Step on it! Step on something else to your leg! Don't let a Reese's Pieces cost you a chocolate factory! Can't. <laughs> These two were unable to make it to the top, so the only logical thing to do is rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Oh. All right. Well, congratulations. Head over to the chocolate river. We were made of chocolate is not very practical. And now that she's gone, <laughs> pair up into groups of two. Is everyone happy with their partners? Yeah. All right, next challenge. And now we have the two. Okay, so now that you've got this three minute, four minute mark, you actually have to reduce the pace a little bit. Like it's kind of a mistake, I think, for some creators to just keep on this intense like pace for the entire video. But the thing is, a video almost becomes unwatchable at a certain point if you try to do that. You're still keeping at a good pace, don't get me wrong, but if you have no contrast between the super exciting bits and the other exciting bits, then I think that the really exciting bits aren't really gonna be highlighted that much. Cedars in the world, get out of the way. Excuse me. Uh, Matt Stoney and Joey Chestnut. And they're gonna demonstrate the next challenge. Bring out the chocolate! Not this chocolate. This is our chocolate bar that you can order online. And we have two brand new pizza bars. Okay. No Smooth chocolate. integration. Can you show us how to speed eat this? Absolutely, yeah. Hey, all you guys should take notes. That's insane. 
I feel like I'm gonna throw up just watching them. <laughs> I think you all get the gist. Last team to eat the chocolate bar is obviously eliminated. Begin the contest. This is something that I've thought about also with some of my channels too, which is the idea of having an integrated sponsorship. Now, here, it's almost like Mr. Beast has created his own product placement and he can do whatever he wants because it's his own physical chocolate bar that he's created. Something that's interesting about YouTube is you're trying to keep people's retention, but you're also wanting to perhaps plug products or talk about products, right? So the perfect way to plug a product without losing that drop in retention is actually going to be to one, have your own product, and then two, integrate it properly within your own video. If you don't have your own product, you can get away with, you know, just working with sponsors and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, that's how most YouTubers will do it. But really you have to integrate your product in a way that's better for your audience. And I think that that advertisement is gonna be much more effective for your viewers rather than having a discrete ad spot of just like, you know, uh, here is this thing I'm gonna talk about for 45 seconds and you have to watch it until the end. <laughs> but if you can have this really smooth integration, in Mr. Beast's case, he'll usually put it in terms of a game as well that's going on at the same time so that you want to get to the end of the game whilst the ad sponsorship is going on. And so, and so you see this in the Squid Game video as well. I'm gonna re-upload the Squid Game storytelling analysis to this channel because um, there's a lot of really good stuff in that as well. Challenge has officially started. Two people will lose. You guys literally saw what you have to do. Shove it in your mouth and then shove water in your mouth. Keep it going. Keep, Keep it, it going. In your mouth. I think they've made the most progress so far. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> That's dark chocolate, not milk chocolate. So you're good. I'm good. Yeah. There's a chocolate factory <laughs> on the so line. I've been trying really hard to lose weight. This is right. like counterproductive. It's been hot. Hey, oh, we got it. Those two guys are getting close. It's kind of now or never for you guys. They are about ready to finish. You guys have to go fast right now. There's, <laughs> it's kind of now or never for you guys. Just little stuff like that tries to increase the tension by making the competition seem close. I mean, it's this increased sense of urgency that really adds a lot of tension to the scene. Yeah. Make sure you watch the end of the video because I have a special surprise guest that will blow your mind. <laughs> if you see the Twitter posts, you know exactly who this surprise guest is. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I think um, the watch to the end of the video thing is another technique that Mr. Beast often uses. You can't just say watch this to the end of the video, you're going to be really surprised. You want to have something quite specific with that incentive for someone to watch. I guess you could term this incentivized retention. It's watch this much and then you'll be rewarded with something specific. And this incentivized retention idea is something that Mr. Beast uses a lot. I think it's something that really good creators use a lot as well. The final six contestants are outside. And can you guys take your blindfolds off and look to the right? This is the world's largest bottle of Coke. Chandler, can you hold my cane? Yes. And there we go. Editing is cool. How do I get up here? If you land the world's largest <laughs> Ninto and the world's largest bottle of Coke, you win. Don't forget this building, everything, you know, is on the line. This is half a million dollars. Well, I mean, it's not more. Oh. oh. In, this is, in the box. This is an amazing idea. <laughs> it's so interesting because you know what's going to happen with Coca Mentos, right? So you're going to watch this until the end, but also you want to watch the competition because you don't just want to watch the, the Coca and Mentos, like, you know, sprouting up. You want to see who actually physically wins this competition. Competition. So it's this interesting combination of like science experiment plus maybe like a dude perfect uh, trick shot kind of video plus a competition all in one single scene. So this scene is actually like kind of amazing. It's own right. <laughs> yes, in the bottom. Let's I don't know if Mentos had also partially sponsored this segment or Coke had also partially sponsored this segment as well, but that would be interesting. So we can get Chandler to say that. Don't forget, if you make this, that because could determine whether or not you want a chocolate factory. First try. Nope. I think that was the worst one yet. And while they're throwing these, I need to tell you guys about honey. Come ah. We didn't even hit the bottle. I know all of you have tried our chocolate bars, but how many of you have used honey? I have. Hey, I actually oh, love really? it. All six of you. Oh, yeah. Good. Honey is a free browser add-on that you can install on basically all your devices. And what it does is, oh, oh my gosh, we're getting really close. We need to hurry up. When you check out <laughs> online, it automatically scans the internet for coupon codes. And this is really cool. This is actually really brilliant. You've got this parallel ad read. You've got the ad read going on and then you've got the video playing at the same time. So your retention is not lost because the thing is, people hear the Honey ad and everything like that, but they're still watching the video. That's really quite brilliant. Them for you. And if you look down there, you'll see a TV that I bought, which Honey saved me $447 on. If you miss this shot, I'll let you keep that $3,000 TV. You'll let me keep it? Yeah. Oh. All right. 
That's all you ever say, you honey. And honey will not only help you save money on TVs, but your favorite websites. When you buy shoes, electronics, even chocolate bars, honey can be there to save you money. It's free and easy to install. Just go to joinhoney.com slash MrBeast or click the link in the description and start saving money right now. Wow, close call. Yeah. I think it, it's definitely good because even though even though it's a perfect ad read with that parallel ad reading, like you still want a close call to, to try to get people's attention back <laughs> um, and to make it feel like the video is progressing. Like I'm sure they would have had a lot more tries in between that close call and uh, the actual ad read, but it's still so seamless that you wouldn't have noticed that and it just seems like it's the natural progression of the video and they just actually you know tried and got it. But I'm sure actually the reality was they had a lot more tries before that. So high. Whoever wins the chocolate factory, you might have a, a little stain on the side. Since oh he was God. the one that made the shot, he gets Next challenge. Now we're in a room covered with marshmallows. <laughs> Dive on the floor. Oh. Did that hurt? No, not at all. And in front of each of the contestants, I don't trust you with the flamethrower. Can you stand just a little more that way? And in front of each <laughs> contestant, it's a little peppermint carousel. Can you all stand on it? The challenge has officially begun. Whoever falls off first loses. You start spinning faster. They all kind of look like NPCs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If you step, here, step right while you're doing it, and it'll help you with the sickness. Like, cause you don't have to spin, you can just step in place. Don't trust Jimmy. I don't trust that. That seems scary. Oh, 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 oh no, that's sad. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> unexpected Marshall. I spent a lot of money on this. Oh, look at him over there. I can't feel my toes. There's four toilets behind me. Three are real, one's made of cake. Whichever person picks the cake one is eliminated. <laughs> so if they're right, they're wrong? No, they have to be right about the wrong one. I'm not joking. One of those toilets is... This is a... Okay, you won't know this from this video, actually. It's impossible to have determined from this video. The cake or not idea is actually a concept that's trending on Netflix right now. And so you may not actually even know the cake or not concept, but... A lot of research has obviously been done into this video. This concept is inherently a self a viral concept, right? It itself can be like, oh yeah, Mr. Beast did this cool thing where there were three toilets that were real and one was pretend and it looks so real, it was crazy. Just creating a lot of little viral moments like that, you know, the Mentos one, for example, as well, the Chocolate River, is all this like stuff that you can very, very easily pass to other people via word of mouth that's gonna make this video extremely good in the long term. I mean, it's got, it's got 11 million views already, but no doubt at some stage, it'll probably reach up like 200 million views, uh, you know, if not more than that quickly. There's all these little viral concepts that are easily shareable to each individual person. And whoever picks the cake toilet loses the chocolate factory. We're gonna start things off with number one over here. Take your blindfold off, you have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, two. All right, so you're picking toilet number two. Stay in front. Pretty subtle there. Uh, like this is a throwback that's for the people who have watched the Squid Game video. It's just like that little callback of like the Squid Game circle triangle square thing. And you know, it's not really to make people who haven't watched the Squid Game video be like, oh, like, you know, what's that symbol? It's more so so that people will comment on it and then be like, hey, like I recognize this. So people get that feeling of, I know the Mr. Beast channel this well. Like I am a fan of the Mr. Beast channel. And so I recognize this particular symbol. So having those little audience branding symbols and stuff just makes your viewer feel like they're more included as opposed to this is just a video made for the masses and I am one of the masses, even though, you know, 11 million people have watched this already. Four, three, two, two. All right, so you're picking toilet number two. Stand in front of it and face this way. Now we have number two, are you ready? Yep. Take the blindfold off. Five, four, three, one. Okay, go for it. All right, that leaves only toilet three and four left. Five, four, Three, two, three. Okay, you picked toilet number three. So I hate to break the news to you, but there's only one toilet left, so you can just go walk in front of it. Three of these toilets are real. One is made of cake. Can you guys sit down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone, his toilet was the one made of cake. No. Oh my God, a cane. The cane is no more. I don't know if you guys have ever made a toilet out of cake, but this took forever, so please subscribe. Can you flush that? Deal. It's a very quick reminder to the subscribe as well. The timing of the subscribe and when you put the subscribe is going to be important. Some people, you know, for no reason put the subscribe, be like, you know, if you like this video, like and subscribe, and then they go on with the actual video. So that's too early. Putting it too late means that you may not actually have, you know, people that are there <laughs> to, to do the subscribe because you only got like 30% of retention already by the end. So, so having it somewhere in the middle is probably like a sweet spot in terms of subscribing if that's something that you're aiming for. Similarly, the ad as well is also in the middle 
of the whole video rather than at the end of the video. I had to go at some point if I was gonna win. Have fun in Arizona. I'll see you soon down there. Oh my gosh. Wow, I don't know if this is wholesome or not. <laughs> hey, don't worry, Jimmy. Being a boat captain is a piece of cake. And we have one final challenge left that will decide which one of you walks away with this chocolate factory. We have. Okay, if you watch to this point in the video, you're definitely gonna watch the rest, right? You've got three contestants left. You just, you know what's gonna happen. The three visually represented there, you know they're gonna get eliminated. Um, so you're gonna watch the rest of the video at this point. <laughs> three contestants, and what better person to decide which one of you wins a chocolate factory than, come on in, Gordon Ramsay. How's it going, man? The big reveal. You're probably guessing the final challenge is a cooking challenge. And they have 45 minutes to make a dessert for Gordon Ramsay to judge. He'll be judging on looks and taste. Begin. Yes. Okay. Don't forget it. Chocolate Factory is on the line. I don't normally do these cooking shows. What do I do now? So this is tough on the fun way. I'm starting off with a Funfetti cake. How much chocolate are you put in there? I'm going to keep the chocolate out of the Funfetti cake. It's going to come in at a later moment. A later moment? We haven't got much time. We've only got 45 minutes. Are you a little stressed out right now. Are you OK? I'm good. I'm good. He makes everything so much more intense. I love it. What? Gordon will now begin judging all three dishes. He's going to give him a score 1 out of 10 on looks and a score 1 out of 10 based on how it tastes. First with the highest score at the end wins the Chocolate Factory. Justin, describe the dish. This is Rocky rode on a cone and melted the marshmallows on top. I had a marshmallow at the bottom because I didn't know what to do at the bottom, so. <laughs> I don't know what looks worse, the one at the bottom or the one on top. <laughs> so visually, it looks a little bit uh, pedestrian. I'll take that. It looks like you've dropped it. I'm gonna give that a five out of 10, right? So 10 total. 10 total. All right, here's a 10 out of 20. So. It looks like a bomb's gone off here. What happened No, that, it looked great before. And then the last minute, he somehow managed to ruin his whole creation. On top, I have whipped cream that's actually melted. It's not there anymore. And then I've got caramel bananas um, sitting on top of <laughs> coconut-covered, uh, chocolate-covered marshmallows. Have you ever heard the word stop? <laughs> I think more. the same thing. Yes. Yeah. So visually, it looks a mess. Three out of ten. Oh. Taste-wise, what's the liquid? Why is it gone all liquid? What do you do? The syrup flooded out, and then it was just too much. It's good? <laughs> No, it's not. I know it's not. Right. You, you have no Ooh. way of winning, so. Thank you guys, it was a lot of fun. It was really nice to meet you. I was. We went out, we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prizes you see on the screen. And prizes aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients. It just genuinely <laughs> tastes good. Go to peacefuls.com right now wow, and order some chocolate. Deep. Only problem is the chocolate river is deteriorating. All the candy is going bad. There's probably a million flies in there, and it costs a lot of money to upkeep. So I'll be right back. Right here is half a million dollars in cash. <laughs> Will you sell me your chocolate factory for half a million dollars? Because if not, it's probably going to cost you over 100 grand a year to maintain. I've never seen so much money in my life. Will you buy this off of me? Yes. For half a million dollars? Of course, right here. This is mine. If you hand me this, you can put this money in your car. I officially hand it to you. Okay. Oh my God. And then it ends. <laughs> It's an amazing video at the end with a pretty amazing payoff. I think that adding Gordon Ramsay really added that bit of intensity and interestingness because it almost feels like there's like a separate mini video within the main video, right? And I think that's probably one of the beauty of Mr. Beast's retention is that Mr. Beast's videos don't feel like it's one long video. It feels like it's a whole bunch of really interesting mini videos with some narrative thread connecting them all. The end, as always, is gonna be extremely quick. And this video is an extremely good video to learn good storytelling techniques because being able to do that gives you more retention and being able to get more retention gets you more views for your videos. If you wanna take your YouTube videos to the next level, I've actually created a course just about YouTube storytelling for retention. Here we go even more into depth about what makes a good hook, what makes a good structure of a video, the language you can use and viral idea fundamentals. So definitely check it out. Links in the description below. I promise it's really, really useful. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more case studies like this. This is Darby Analysis Channel. I'll see you in the next video.